A family begged for charges for months following a deadly shooting. They wanted me to believe that my son was the aggressor. Now they've got their wish, yet the suspect's mother says her son should not be in court. His life was threatened. A rising star for Team USA killed while cycling. Today, a driver is charged with his death nearly five months after the crash. The mountains will get hit with some more snow tonight. We're tracking what to expect around the metro area. Plus, the NFL's been to London, Germany, Mexico. Now they're heading somewhere known for a different kind of football. Nine News at 4 starts now. Oh, it's another chilly day. We're soon going to see it get really cold and a snowy night in just a few hours. We expect some light snow. A winter storm warning is effect to the south, and that's where the heavy totals are expected tonight. Here in Denver, we're tracking just a little bit of light snow, but still it could be enough to cause a slick commute for your home, uh, the commute home tonight. We'll have more in Chris Bianchi's forecast in just a few minutes. We're also following some breaking news we want to bring you. National news where the House has just voted to move forward with an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. House Republicans are investigating whether the president and his son Hunter took part in an influence peddling scheme. House Republicans argue that a formal inquiry will strengthen their access to more documents and testimony, but they have not found or provided any evidence that they need this so far. This comes on the same day that Hunter Biden was on Capitol Hill, saying he is willing to testify before a House committee in public, but not in the closed door session that Republicans are demanding. Hunter Biden has already been indicted on felony charges of failing to pay his taxes on time and separate gun possession charges. Today, he acknowledged being extremely irresponsible with his finances during the depths of his addiction and battling addiction. For months, family has begged for charges against the man accused of shooting and killing another man at a Tesla charging station in Edgewater, and now they finally got their wish. Police arrested Jeremy Smith yesterday. He's facing charges of murder and second-degree manslaughter in the death of Adam Fresquez. Nine News reporter Brianna Clark spoke to the victims and suspects' families today. Yeah, the $300,000 cash bond is probably the one thing that they are happy about right now. They spent the last seven months fighting for charges to be brought up against the man who pulled the trigger. Now they're fighting to keep him in jail. Today we got a copy of the affidavit and these court documents are giving us a better idea of what happened before and after the shooting at the Edgewater charging station on May 3rd. Before entering the courtroom today, Family and friends of Adam Fresquez gathered to pray as they seek justice in the case. According to the affidavit, there were other vehicles at the scene of the shooting, and one had a camera rolling. Documents show Fresquez arrived at the Edgewater charging station seconds before Jeremy Smith. Fresquez then walks towards Smith's vehicle. Less than a minute later, this says the video shows Fresquez stumbling and Smith driving away. One witness told police they heard Fresquez screaming at Smith to get out of his car, but Smith never got out. Another witness said they saw Smith pointing a gun, but didn't see Fresquez pull out a gun. Police say they later found Fresquez had a gun tucked into his pants. They found another gun with an extended magazine in his passenger seat. The toxicology report shows Fresquez had cocaine and fentanyl in his system. Court documents say they also found those drugs in his pockets. Inside Smith's car, the affidavit shows investigators found the weapon Smith reportedly used in the shooting, along with two magazines. And on the floor behind the driver's seat were two shell casings. The affidavit shows he called 911 before texting his mother, saying he was involved in a road rage incident while driving. When he parked at the charging station, he told operators that Fresquez pulled out a gun and stuck it in his face. Smith then says he first pepper sprayed Fresquez and then saw the man reaching for a gun, so Smith shot him. His life was threatened, and he did what he had to do. It was, you know, I love my son. He's a good kid. How about you understand it from my side? At least you could see your son. At least you could visit your son. At least his children could see him or talk to him on the phone. I don't get that. My grandchildren don't get that. The autopsy found Fresquez was shot in the back twice. Smith's next court hearing is scheduled for December 19th.
It has been cold today around the metro area and we are expecting a little bit of snow in just a matter of hours. So let's get to Chris Bianchi. Uh, I stepped outside and realized I didn't have enough clothes on. So I like hurried me and my three year old back. We put on like another layer. It's cold out there. Uh, Kim, you said it yesterday. It's kind of one of those days where you just didn't want to get out of bed. right? No, no. Another dark morning. We're not used to it. It's like uh, gloomy. No, <laughs> the sun, Chris. Feels like Chicago or Detroit. I don't know. One of it those does. last couple of Midwest. days. But uh, don't worry. We'll We'll get back to our regularly scheduled program here in the Denver area, back to our sunshine tomorrow. But in the meantime, for today, it's just cloudy and cold for us in Denver, but look behind me. That's what it looks like in Buena Vista right now. Snow covering the roadways, and it is coming down there in Buena Vista for the Collegiate Peaks on south. It's snowing very, very heavily on this uh, Wednesday evening, but that snow for us in the Denver area, not here yet, but I think we're going to get a little bit in a couple of hours. Meantime, quick shot of snow for us in Denver tonight, more in southern Colorado, and then warmer and drier starting tomorrow. H-E Doppler radar, it's busy for us again in the southern part of the state. That's where our area low pressure is centered, and that's going to ramp up the snow for the Denver area later on tonight. But in the meantime, the snow from Colorado Springs on south into Pueblo, Walsenburg, Trinidad. By the way, Trinidad, you could pick up a foot of snow out of the system here in Denver, though. Again, things are quiet right now. You look off to the south, some snow for us in Albert County. That snow will move its way in our direction over the next couple of hours. Winter weather advisories in Teal, those cover most of southern Colorado and some winter storm warnings for us in the southern and eastern portions of the state. And that's where we could see again over a foot of snow in some cases. That burst of snow possible for us here in the Denver area after about 6 p.m., I think around 6, 7, 8 o'clock, we get a quick shot of snow and that'll pretty much be it for us here in the Denver area. Then things clear on out. It snows basically all night long and all morning long tomorrow in southern Colorado. That's where it could again be talking about some of those jackpot tolls. I'll show you how much you can expect and also how much we might be able to expect here in the Denver area tonight. All that coming up in my full forecast. Okay. Well, the weather's may feel like Christmas. That's, that's for sure. We're just going to say that from the get go. Today. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Lighten things up around here. Uh, Douglas County deputies are working around the clock on auto thefts. Within a matter of 24 hours this week, the department made four arrests related to a car theft. Now, the first happened just after midnight on Sunday when a deputy spotted a stolen car. A man from Denver was found with a key fob to the truck in his pocket. An hour later, another stolen car spotted. This time it was tied to a previous burglary. The driver was arrested during a traffic stop. And then an hour later, deputies were involved in a chase that started in Parker. The car was stolen out of Colorado Springs. They released this dash camera video from the chase. It ended with the use of stop sticks and the driver crashing through a fence into a gas pump at a gas station. The woman driving tried to run away but was arrested. A fourth case happened about 10 30. Monday night, a woman was arrested after deputies spotted the stolen car in a Walmart parking lot. They say the car was stolen out of Aurora and the ignition was tampered with. The woman was also found with counterfeit money and drugs. She was arrested without incident. After nearly three weeks of testimony, today prosecutors rested their case in the trial of the two paramedics accused of causing the death of Elijah McLean. Their last witness spent the better part of today on the stand. Dr. Roger Mitchell, a forensic pathologist who we've heard from before, told the jury today there was no obvious need to inject McLean with ketamine. Within minutes, his heart stopped. At one point, he is really solemn, meaning sleepy. Um, He's able to be rolled over, and his pockets checked. And he's not active or bucking or moving uh, when that ketamine is administered. The defense will start presenting their case tomorrow. Paramedics Jeremy Cooper and Peter Chikuniak have been charged with reckless manslaughter for their role in McLean's death.